If you're an interior designer studying for the NCIDQ practicum exam, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through a problem that I can almost guarantee you will encounter on the test. And that is the adjacency matrix. What's up designers, my name is Kelsey. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the industry itself. And if you're a designer either interested in taking the NCIDQ exam one day or you've already begun to study for it, then I'm here to help you pass that shit. Be sure to click the link down in this video's description box to sign up for my exclusive email list where you will receive more NCIDQ exam related information and get on the list for my full study guide course that I will be launching. So without further ado, please step into my studio. Before we look at an adjacency matrix, we need to understand why we even need one in the first place. Adjacency matrices are considered a method of information analysis and synthesis, which refers to a designer's ability to intake information, analyze it, and then synthesize it into a design concept or solution. That basic process is at the core of this exam and your general job as an interior designer. Some examples of this are analyzing a client's spatial needs and synthesizing that into a formal space program, analyzing a code and synthesizing that into an emergency exiting plan, or even analyzing inspiration imagery and synthesizing that into a more concise design concept. Your main role as a designer and as your client's liaison is to come up with solutions to their problems with the information you're given. Besides the adjacency matrix, there are several different types of information analysis and synthesis questions and graphs that you might see on the exam. So if you're currently studying for it and you have a copy of David Kent Ballast's NCIDQ Reference Manual 7th edition, which I can leave a link to in the description box, then I suggest you turn to chapter six, Information Analysis and Synthesis, and read it in its entirety. The specific purpose of using an adjacency matrix in your interior design practice is to identify and establish the relationships between spaces listed in the project program. These relationships are usually recorded graphically in a matrix like shown here. You might also see an adjacency matrix shown like this, which is formally named a folded adjacency matrix. This is actually the version that I encountered when I took the exam a few years back, but you could see either versions of these. Don't worry because the way that we're gonna solve this today is the exact same method for both of these matrices. On the practicum exam, you may see this question in any of the three case studies that you're given. To complete an adjacency matrix, you will need a program outlining all of the spaces needed, as well as a list of primary and secondary adjacencies. You'll find that list in the design scenario and programming tab, which explains all of the project requirements. The program will outline a list of primary adjacencies and secondary adjacencies. The primary adjacencies, as you can probably guess, are the most important space relationships, meaning that these two spaces must be in close proximity to each other on the floor plan. The secondary adjacencies are therefore secondary or not as important as the primary ones. This is groundbreaking information, people. I hope you are realizing that. Your adjacency matrix will be given to you either partially or completely blank, and your job is to place the primary and secondary symbols in the correct positions. The primary adjacency symbol is typically shown as a black filled in circle, while the secondary adjacency is typically shown simply as a black outline. Although this format may change for future test versions. This is the version that I saw. Think of this graph as a row of boxes that intersect. If two spaces have an adjacency, the symbol will be placed in the box that touches the rows of both spaces. For example, if there's a primary adjacency between the reception area and the conference room, this is the box that the primary symbol will be placed because this box touches both the reception area and the conference room rows. If there's a secondary adjacency between the pantry and the copy area, a secondary symbol will be placed in this box where they intersect. Yes, it really is that simple. Do not overthink it. Let's now continue filling out this entire matrix based on the program we have. 
All right, so here's our adjacency matrix. We already have the reception area and the conference room done. There's a primary adjacency between those, as we see in our project requirements. The second primary adjacency, it says, is between office four and the open office area. So we have office four is this row here. Our open office area is here. So we're going to put a primary adjacency bubble in here, and this is, Kind of the format how you'll see it on the practicum exam it'll be shown on the computer like this you'll have to drag and drop these symbols just like this i'm doing this right now in photoshop so ignore all of these extra little colors and annotations that's just from adobe so let's go on to the final primary adjacency which is the reception area and the copy area which would be this guy right here. So we'll take another primary adjacency symbol and put it right here in this copy area and reception area row. Okay, secondary adjacencies. Our first one that we're seeing is office number one and the pantry, which would be here, pantry, office one. Make sure that you're putting these symbols in the right boxes because all of these rows can get a little confusing, especially if you're hours into an exam and you're not thinking straight. So always triple check, follow the row down to make sure that you're placing it in the correct spot. And we are. Next, we have the reception area and the restroom. The reception area is getting a lot of action in this diagram. Reception area, restroom, okay and reception and open office. This must be a really big reception area. Reception area and open office. So reception and open office. And that's it. This is our filled out adjacency matrix. And hopefully you see something like this on the exam. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Again, don't overthink this. If you're looking for more NCIDQ test prep videos, check out my NCIDQ video playlist here or on my YouTube channel. And if you're thinking of taking the NCIDQ exam, then don't forget to click the link down below to be added to my NCIDQ study guide course waitlist and be the first to know when it launches. I'll see you next time for more educational interior design content. Thanks again for watching and happy studying.